This is a filament LED clock kit. I recently received this kit from my brother for my birthday, and I thought it'd be a really interesting project to assemble here today. So let's take a look inside and see what you get. Okay, as you can see, we have this nice PCB, which includes a frame where we're going to put our LED filaments. We have a number of chips to install and some switches down the bottom as well. So that's gonna be plenty of soldering to do in this video. Speaking of those components, we have some switches just here and these have quite long stems, so they're interesting, nice and clicky. We have a potentiometer or variable resistor here. We have an actual clock crystal just here, so that'll be really useful to make sure we're keeping very accurate time. Previously, I've assembled clock kits where they didn't have a crystal when they were just reliant on a microcontroller. This particular kit is powered by USB-C, so we have a USB-C socket just here, and we actually have a provided USB-C cable as well. For clock backup, we have a CR2032 battery holder just here, and we've been provided with two batteries as well. There's a switch here, a speaker, which I assume will make a buzzing sound, maybe some alarm clock functionality there. We have this small capacitor, but this one's marked 104. I don't know if that's going to come out on the video. And we also have a transistor. To mount the clock, we have two pieces of acrylic here, which represent part of the case. And we can see there's some holes drilled here for the buttons. We also have plenty of mounting hardware, and hopefully that's going to be all of the correct size and work correctly. I have had previous trouble with other kits. We also have a few resistors down here, very standard to have some resistors. And in this little box here, we have a variety of additional fun components, and that includes all of our LED filaments and our chips and our sockets for those ICs. Unlike some of the kits I've done recently, this one does indeed come with comprehensive instructions. So we can see a little bit about how the clock is going to look when fully assembled. We can see there's the power port on the left hand side, as well as the on off switch, which we've just seen, the buttons to control the clock, the ceramic LED filaments, and a brightness adjustment knob, which is going to be quite nice. Some usage instructions and features, a list of all the parts we expect to have. And then on the back here, we have some step-by-step -step instructions, which I'm going to follow in the assembly of this kit. So now we know what we have and what we need to do, let's go ahead and get started. So according to the instructions, the first thing to install is the crystal oscillator at position X1. And it says, do not insert it fully. It looks like we're supposed to fold it over forward. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. That exists just here at position X1. I'm going to use the tweezers here to make sure we get a nice bend without putting too much strain on the leads just here for the clock crystal like so. Okay, our next instruction is to install our resistors. And we're told we have five 2K resistors and two 10 ohm resistors. So these will be our two 10 ohm resistors. And we can see on the color code just here that we have brown, black, black, gold with a brown tolerance band. So we don't often see the gold band here as a measurement band, but this is telling us that we need to divide by 10. And so we have brown and black, black, which is 100, zero, zero, which is 100. And the gold says to divide by 10. And so we actually only have 10 ohms. So these are 10 ohm resistors. I'm going to install those ones just first, just here, and then we'll do the 2K resistors as well. So our 10 ohm resistors go at positions R5 and R6, which are just here on the board. And next we have the 2K resistors, and they should be in R1 to R4 and R7. So we can look at the color codes on these resistors as well. And this time we can see red, black, black, brown with a brown tolerance band, 2000. Next, we're told to install the switch and the USB-C connector. So making sure both of these are soldered facing outwards.
Step four is to install our 0.1 microfarad capacitor at C1, and as you can see, it's marked 104. Step five is to install our S8550 transistor at the Q1 position. And as it highlights, it's important the arc of the transistor follows the silk screen outline. And you can see we've got quite a lot of flux residue there, so I'm just going to clean that up with a little spritz of isopropyl alcohol. Next, we have to put in some DIP16 IC sockets in U1 to U5. And it points out that we need to make sure the little notch is aligned with the notch on the silk screen. And so those just go along uh, here. One, two, three, four, five. And these are all provided in our little box. Step seven here is to install the eight pin IC socket in the U6 position. And again, making sure to align the notch with the silk screen. Okay, next it's telling us to insert the microcontroller into position U1. And let's go ahead and do that just to follow the instructions precisely. So as it says uh, in the instructions here, the microcontroller is an STC HG series. This is a 1K08, and it's going to position U1. And we have a variety of different chips. So if we look here, we can hopefully see that this is the STC chip. And I have a magnifying glass, if that will help. Hopefully you can see this is the STC chip. To get it into the socket, we just need to bend the leads more square slightly. And I'll do that generally by rolling these larger chips on the table. And it says that this indeed needs to go into position U1, which it would appear to be this one here above the switches just here, above switch two and above switch three. Unfortunately, now we've installed the socket, we can't clearly see where the microcontroller labeling is. And those are all under the sockets, which is a little bit unfortunate. No, so we're gonna to have to rely on the fact that that's above switch two and switch three. And switch two and switch three are here. So we're gonna pop the microcontroller in here. Next we have to put in some other ICs and these ones are 74HC595 chips and they go in U2 to U5 and again we need to follow the dimple outline to make sure we're aligning correctly and these go in the other four sockets so that's very helpful as well because it shows us the other four sockets are populated all with the other same type of chip and hopefully you can see that on the camera that we have the SN74HC595. Okay, so all of those are installed. And the 595 is just a shift register. And what it means is that the processor here at the center, the microcontroller, can control many more outputs than it would normally be able to do. Of course, there's plenty of outputs that we're gonna have installed in the form of all these LED filaments that we need to pop onto the board. And so it needs lots more outputs. And these 595 shift registers allow the microcontroller to control each of the digits via a single um, signal out that is then pushed out in parallel by these shift registers. Step 10 here is for us to install the clock chip. And so this is a DS1302 at position U6. And so this is actually providing us the good solid clock signal, as well as a small amount of storage as well, which can be used for, of course, setting the alarm time. For smaller chips, I often bend them with the tweezers to avoid accidentally crushing them because they're a little bit smaller. And again, make sure we are lining up the notch. And I can just about make out actually the U6 on this one. And importantly, this one goes in the opposite direction. So the chip essentially goes upside down in this case. Next up for step 11, we're being asked to install all of the switches. Next, it's telling us to install the LED bars. 
and it's telling us which way we need to place the bars on here. So it says there's 30 filaments, and apparently these ones are positive, and these ones are negative. Okay, so what it's saying here in the small text is that the square pads are positive and the round pads are negative, and the bars here are marked as positive, and that indicates the direction. So I just want to make sure we have these up the right way. So I'm just putting this in the diode test continuity mode. Okay, good. And I'm just going to pop one of these just momentarily on top of some blue tack just to hold it. And then this end here should be positive and that end should be negative. And there we go. And so that's the dark orange side. And if I flip it upside down, there's a slightly paler side as well. Let's just roll it slightly. And actually these ones are fairly evenly illuminated, but I am going to put them all around the right way with the darker orange side up. And looking carefully at the diagram here, we are bending the pins through the holes apparently, so let's see if that's going to be possible. So let's carefully bend the pins on these. Okay, so that took quite some time, but we've now completed putting in all of the LEDs, and it seems we have a few spare LEDs, and they might come in handy if it turns out that we've put any of these in backwards, or they don't work for some other reason. Next up, we are at step 13, which is to pop in the long handle potentiometer, and that's our brightness control in RP1, which is over here. And it looks like that's supposed to go on the back of the board. But let's double check. Okay, so I've just accidentally put too much pressure on this bar and broken it. You can see it's flexible here, so that was a bit of a mistake. So we're going to quickly remove that and replace it. So usually I would put these in last, but I was following the instructions there. So obviously a little bit clumsy on my part, but if I was doing this Again, I probably would put these in last to avoid that kind of issue. Okay, so all of our LEDs are in again. Hopefully everything is still fine. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this potentiometer in. It's a bit of a struggle there because of these slightly curved pins. So I'm just gonna straighten them very slightly, see if that helps. And I'm gonna be super careful here not to go anywhere near the LED. Next up we have the speaker here and we can see it goes just like so. So we should put the positive side into the square socket. Okay, next step 15 which is our battery holder. There's a little location nub just here on the back, which I'm just going to snip off to try and get this a little bit flatter. Let's pop this in again. And there you go, at least we can get it down a little bit further. We should just be able to make those connections. Next up, we need to install a CR2032 battery, and the kit did actually provide us with two. 17, we then need to do the attachments. And so we need to put these bars through. Okay, and then we need to attach the black plastic part with the provided screws, which is step 18. Okay, so we should be fully assembled now. 
Next thing I need to do then is to try and apply some power. And I have a power bank here, which we'll just use for testing. And let's try this switch here. There we go. We actually have something showing. It looks like this one is not working. So I'm assuming that should be a zero. Oh no. Actually, all of the bars are actually just working just fine. So there we go. I'll just turn it up to maximum brightness and now it's much clearer. There we go. Maybe a bit bright there. Well, it's very stepped. The microcontroller is obviously reading the value and then doing some encoding. So there you go. Every single LED is working correctly and you can hear the speaker beeping away. So I'm just going to turn it off for a second and take a quick look at these instructions here. Okay, so I think I have got this figured out now. So we're currently in the clock mode, and hopefully you can see this is showing 4.25, um, which is not quite the right time, but close enough for now. I'll fix this a little bit later. You can see the tentacle bars indicate the time is going ahead. If we want to move to the next mode, we hold down this first button here, and this shows us that it is the 5th of, the, of October, of the 10th month, and so that's the date, which is the uh, date and month. In the next mode, we see the day of the week, and the 5th of October is a Sunday, so we have the seven here. This goes from one to seven. The next page shows us the current year, which as you can see is 2025. And then finally, we have the alarm time, which is set to midnight. So we probably want to adjust that. So if we want to adjust it, we hold down this last button here, and this lets us adjust the one that is flashing here. And so I think zero is fine for the um, minutes. We probably want to set this to something like seven o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to hold down this first button, which will switch to this side. And now we can use this left button to increase the number. And if we went past, here we are on eight, we press this middle button to go down to seven. We can press this button here again to go back to the other side. And maybe we want to say quarter past. So I'm just going to um, click this one all the way through to 15. There we go. And then when we want to save, we just hold down that last button. And that is now set and we want to go back to the regular mode and so you can see now time is keep ticking over it's uh, 4 35 now and the time is ticking so i think this is a really neat little clock it's a little unfortunate there that i managed to break one of the led bars but it was good that the kit included plenty of extras i still have another five to go should i break any more so that's definitely useful to know so i'd recommend that if you were going to assemble this clock yourself Adding the LED bars in here would be the very last thing you do. It might even make sense to do that after you have attached the plastic casing. And bear in mind, of course, that you can leave the paper on to avoid any solder splashes, um, at least on the exterior surface, until you're ready. So that might be worthwhile doing and then removing the paper that covers the plastic once you finish inserting all of those LEDs. But for now, I hope you found this video about assembling the ceramic filament DIY clock interesting. And I hope to speak to you again soon in the next video.